So gamma is, are the fastest brain waves that we really work with and measure. They're not the fastest brain waves that exist. We honestly don't know how fast the brain can go. We're limited by technology. So you have to have equipment that can measure things ridiculously fast in order to measure brain waves that are ridiculously fast. So, so we talk about gamma being the fastest brain wave. It's not. But it's the fastest one that we sort of understand um, and that we talk about. So if you kind of look at this little chart, you can see uh, what we mean when we're talking about speeds of brain waves. Slower brain waves down here at the bottom, delta, you can see they're very slow and lopy, right? And then you can kind of see how they speed up. It's how many repetitions there are of a wave per second of time. That's how we determine how fast a brain wave is. So cycles per second. Cycles per second is the same as Hertz. So when we talk about electricity and we say something is X Hertz, we're saying how many cycles are there in a second of time? So the electricity coming into my computer right now is 60 Hertz, 60 cycles per second. Well, guess what? Your brain makes 60 Hertz and it makes 70 Hertz and 80 Hertz and 90 Hertz and 100 Hertz and one Hertz <laughs> and everything in between. Right? So what we do is we kind of cluster these things into little categories as ways to kind of simplify the information. And because little clusters often um, work together in a way to influence consciousness in specific ways. So gamma. Gamma is usually thought of as being about 40 hertz. But depending on what researcher you're looking at or neurofeedback person, it's going to vary widely. It could be anywhere from 35 hertz up to 80 hertz, considered gamma. Now, in general, gamma, increases of gamma are basically like there's increased activation. If there's more gamma, that part of the brain is more active. Okay, fine. That's a very basic, rudimentary understanding because there's other states of consciousness that show up with gamma that are kind of more interesting, I think. And one of these has to do with kind of this being in like a flow state or being in the zone. So one of the um, research studies that got a lot of attention a few years back was done by Richie Davidson from the University of Wisconsin. He does a lot of work with uh, Tibetan monks. He works with the Dalai Lama, right? And he did this study looking at these uh, Tibetan monks doing a compassion meditation. And what he found was that when they were doing a compassion meditation, their gamma increased to be about three times the, uh, the amount of the control group. So triple the amount of gamma. And this made a big, a big splash in the media when it came out, right? Because it was like, wait a minute, first off, why would people that are like experts at meditation be showing the fastest brain waves? Shouldn't they have the slowest brain waves? What the hell's going on? And then also like the amount of activity that they had was so dramatic Right, and that's what got, that's what kind of caught all the media, right? Just like the God Spot, all of a sudden you started seeing things saying, "Monks show the fastest brain waves ever," and it's like, oh, "All right, okay." All right. Um, but you also see it with experts when they're doing their expert thing, right? So this is where it ties into like a flow state or being in the zone. So when when these Tibetan monks are doing a compassion meditation, guess what? They're experts at this. They don't have to try to get in a state of compassion. They just do it. And they do it at a high level. That's one of the elements of what gamma is about. If you take a bunch of musicians, they understand music. I'm talking about expert musicians. They understand music at a high level. And you play music and have them listen to it. Guess what? You get gamma. Because they understand music at a high level. They don't have to think about it. They don't have to analyze it. So think about like high level athletes. You know, you watch some sort of sport and you see an athlete do something and it's incredible and it looks like they're not even trying. You ever see that? Where it's like, good Lord, it looks like they're just like taking a walk, you know, and they just did something that's just nuts. Probably gamma, right? So anyway, gamma is associated with these kind of high level states of integration of information that don't require effort. It's also involved in things like lucid dreaming. It's also involved, it shows up in psychedelic states. So in psychedelic states, what's interesting 
is that most of the brain waves decrease. Delta decreases, theta decreases, alpha decreases, beta decreases. The only things that increase are high beta and gamma, the fastest brain waves. And it's especially shown up with things like ayahuasca and 5-MeO-DMT. I'm sure nobody in here knows anything about either of those. <laughs> this last little bullet here I've got in the dying brain with an asterisk, because how do you study what's going on in the dying brain? Hmm. Uh, well, they use rats, right? So um, that's why the asterisk is there. This wasn't a human research study, but they took a bunch of rats. They're measuring their brainwave activity and then euthanizing them. That's the uh, nice way of putting it. And what they saw was that at the moment of death, there were these massive bursts of gamma activity. Now, we don't know what that means, but you start putting these pieces together and it starts to suggest that gamma is interesting, that maybe gamma is involved in higher states of consciousness in some way.